to another episode of Girls TV. This is Candace speaking, and with us today, we have two amazing poets by the name of Mel and Brianna. Poetic, they are members of Poetic Justice. Poetic Justice is a poetry group that was founded on, at the Cambridge School of Weston, and these guys are passionate and serious about their poetry. And to open up the show today, Brianna has decided to perform a poem entitled Beautiful Little Fool. Take it away, Brianna. Thank you, Candy. What does it mean for you to be free? Well, for me, that means I let down my hair off with those shoes and same with my bra. I just don't find it right for me to be enclosed from liberty. I need freedom to jump and jive, swinging left or from side to side, and the bra maker took that away from me cupped me up in layers of society, hung high and perky. If I were free, I wouldn't be the beautiful little fool society needs. Silence in my theory, cause looks show my words. And a guy won't like me strong, so I'll belittle myself. Nevermore. Nevermore will I allow the everyday tactics of society. The institution that raised my shoes in the air made me six feet tall. Tell me the new fashion is an updo, style waxing into a jam fashion because that's what women do. And I'll never be pretty enough. So I smudge the makeup till it blends and hope that a guy rates me a 10. That's normal. That's what all girls do. To be loving yet feisty, the stripper who is a librarian, sweet but sexy, first time and experience. Exposure to nothing and everything. We are the genie in the bottle. Have you shape us to all look like models? More than average, but below standards. Attentively active, aggravated for attention, PMSing into another being. But I am a person. And the life of a person is a time of thinking and acting. And for a girl, that experience can be taken from them in an instant. Living forever is unspoken of for us. Makeup and laughter is inevitable. So we had no choice. Suicidal to our reality, society has murdered a girl's humanity. And it's just too bad you only think I'm exaggerating these emotions. Thank you. Thank you. <sighs> Oh, Brianna, that was amazing. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. I know as a poet myself, I can definitely relate to dealing with issues as far as um, beauty and self-image, and I understand that it took a lot for you to do that poem, so thank you very much. Um, my first question would be, what inspired you to write your poem on womanhood? Well, originally I, I, I was reading the book Great Gatsby, and that book, the main character, Daisy, she was talking about how she wishes her daughter were a beautiful little fool because it would be just so much easier in society. You know, you didn't have to worry about what you really wanted to do and what people were telling you to do. And I felt that, that you know, that, um, that tug with myself and society. And I just had to put it in a poem. Thank you. Um, now, Mal, can you give us a little bit of information about how the group started? Um, it started last November. Um, I was interested in poetry. I always have been interested in writing. And the Cambridge School of Weston, which is a school we attend, doesn't offer too many programs or extracurriculars in poetry. So I decided to start a poetry group. And initially, we were just going to analyze past poets' um, literature, their books, and things that they've created. But it evolved quickly, and we started writing our own stuff. And then um, we started performing. And then the proceeds we got from that went to community service organizations like mm -hmm. Cartwheels in Motion, which is um, a New England New England based um, community service program that helps physically and mentally disabled children learn to swim and do other physical activities. So it um, it evolved quickly, and that's that's really how Poetic Justice started. So it's a year and a few months now. We just celebrated our anniversary. So. I'm sure. I our watchers or viewers will want to know, how does it feel and what inspires you to write these amazing poems? Well, like um, when the poem that I did, like I said, reading a book or, you know, um, hearing someone speak and having something strong to say about it, but not wanting to shut their ideas down. I put it in a poem. You know, I, it's, for, it's a way for me to express exactly what I'm feeling and turn it into some kind of action, hopefully. 
I think I'm inspired to write when I find irony in everyday life. When, um, like one poem I have about interracial um, relationships and marriage and interactions and things like that um, was started basically because I was having a conversation with my grandmother and she asked me why do I talk so white when I'm at school and um, why do I talk black when I'm at home. So um, that's what inspired me to write that poem and then it just evolves from there and there are different characters and stuff that has absolutely nothing to do with the original idea but um, everyday life really inspires me. So. So would you say that you write your best poems when you're angry or sad or emotional? I think I write my best poems when I'm surprised mm -hmm. or when I'm just in a mood to think and um, kind of play with ideas, not necessarily with, with a specific emotion. Yeah, it's whenever I'm really strong in emotion and I don't want to lash out on people. I can definitely agree with that. <laughs> Um, I guess I would like to know, what advice would you give to young women interested in poetry or any other performing arts? I say go for it. If you have a talent, share it with the world. Use that talent. Go far. All right? Don't limit yourself. Yeah. Um, next would be, how much of a time commitment is running Poetic Justice? Mm. And what do you all do outside of the group? Um, it's a full-time job, and it's hard because we are high school students, um, and we have other commitments. Um, both of us are involved in so many other things besides mm -hmm. Poetic Justice, but we try to um, put our best foot forward and give Poetic Justice as much energy as humanly possible and mm -hmm. still, you know, um, focus on our academics and SATs and um, <laughs> college lists and everything like that. Um, currently, I'm actually a manager for an up-and-coming artist in Boston. That's what this t-shirt is for. <laughs> His name is LCA. You can find him on Facebook um, and YouTube. Um, so doing that and poetic justice and things at school and I know Brianna is a part of a better chance. A better chance. I yes. was part of the New Jersey Seas program. Yeah. There are so many things going on, but so it is a, a huge time commitment. Mm -hmm. But we try we try to balance it and work together and share the load. So. Mm -hmm. To the viewers out there, I encourage you all to listen to LCA's music. He's an amazing he really is. artist, and yeah. I definitely would um, approve of his lyrics and rap. I guess I would also want to know, what is the biggest lesson that you've learned so far in the group? Patience, mm -hmm. um, working with other people. I always considered myself a leader, but actually leading. Um, because Brianna is ahead with me, but I'm sort of the founder, so everything really, it kind of sits on me a little bit heavier than it does on her. So actually leading and working with other people and trying to give them what they ask for and what they need. and. Um, managing performances and having to step in with stuff that I'm not even qualified to work with. I, we put on our own shows and sometimes I have to go in the booth and do the lighting and I've never took a lighting design class before <laughs> and I have to work with the music and I have to get all the performers and the costumes and make sure everyone has water. So um, yeah, I think that's the, the thing that I've learned the most is just patience and just you know, staying calm while doing all that stuff because, and remembering at the end of the day that it is my passion and what I would love to do to write and to perform, so, and to raise money for organizations and nonprofits. Mm -hmm. We learned a lot of skills. I couldn't, could not list them all. Oh my goodness. Um, but I would have to say, like, the biggest thing that I've learned is just accepting of all the views in the world. It's, it's grown, it has me grow as a person, as a writer. And as a friend, because like Kamala said, like we're working together, but n we're not going to agree on everything, you know? So just learning to accept all the views and still having your own at the same time, I think that's the biggest thing I've learned. Um, as a writer myself, I can definitely agree with you guys' statements. I know that I've learned to be honest with people and definitely mm -hmm. honest with my work and not sugarcoating anything and not mm -hmm. being apologetic for, what, for some of my views and really giving people... Um, a lesson or educating them myself. Yeah. Um, I also would like to know, do you ever get nervous while performing? Every time. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> Every time right before, but not a nervous energy, mm. like, I don't want to do this, um, why am I getting myself into yeah. this? Just like a surge of energy, excitement. So, nervous energy for the sake of argument, but really um, a sense of excitement and, you know, one time performing, it just all happened so fast, and then once it's over, you know, I don't even remember what happened. Um, so not not really nervous, like scared, but, you know, mm -hmm. excited. 
I would say I'm nervous for the fact that I'm putting kind of my life out there when I'm performing a poem because <laughs> the poems that I write are so close to who I am. It's all really about me. And so for me to share that with someone, for me to share it, you know, with someone I know or who I don't know, mm -hmm. is just so much. And like for, at some point, it's like getting it off my chest, but another, it's like, wow, all the cards are out there. Yeah, it's really hard. Um, to follow up with that, I know that you all were recently nominated for the Princeton Prize in Race Relations. Mm -hmm. How did it feel being nominated, and why do you feel as though you were deserving of that award? <laughs> oh, um, it was definitely an honor. Our head of school, who's basically like um, the principal mm -hmm. at our school, but really the dean of students and everything that goes on at the Cambridge School of West End, um, she nominated us and she has been to all of our shows and she mm -hmm. says that she loves our work. She um, um, she talks about us to her friends and everything. So she sat down with us and said, I really think we can win this and she nominated us. And um, last year a student who I was close to who lived, actually lived in my dorm won the Princeton Prize in race relations. So um, we were trying to stay with that legacy and yeah. um, continue the tradition of winning Princeton Prizes. So. <laughs> I feel like we were deserving of it because, you know, when we perform a poem, it, a lot of people have come up to us and say, wow, I can't believe you, you said exactly what I've been trying to say all these years, and it's affected me so much, but I've been hiding behind it, you know? And we've just opened that door for people to make those statements, for them to say, this is how life works. What can we do about it? We're really pushing for change, you know? So I think that's a big thing. Um, I also would like to know, what feedback has this group gotten thus far? Um, you guys can share the positive and negative of um, being in a group like Poetic Justice. Mm. I remember the first time we performed at the ICA, the Institute of Contemporary Arts um, in Boston. And the following day, we walked, well, Carmela and I, we walked into... I don't remember what story. I think it was like Burger King or something. And someone was like, oh, poetic justice. And I was like, wow, people know who we are. <laughs> like, that was really big for me. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think in the very beginning, there was some negative, um, some negative feedback. Um, but that, that quickly went away once mm -hmm. we started performing and started um, putting our best foot forward and uh, putting a lot of effort into what we did. So... After that, everything has just been appreciation and um, mm -hmm. questioning people. Dialogue has been created, and we've done so many shows for the Board of Trustees at our school and other things outside of school. So really, there hasn't been any negative feedback mm -hmm. since that first week of Poetic yeah. Justice. Um, I know that uh, I've read a lot of poetry and um, listened to a lot of poetry. Would you guys ever consider... Um, writing a book or maybe putting your poems on a CD for others to share and listen to? We've thought about that a lot. Mm -hmm. Like We've been trying to make that happen. Um, maybe we'll get there. We were thinking about going on tour maybe. You know, mm -hmm. maybe like the New, the New England area and see what that would be like. Um, definitely. I think we're going to collect all the articles that have been written about us from various mm -hmm. places and um, some of our yeah. performances, our poems and um, just things that other people have said about us as well, like our anniversary celebration, we gave speeches about who's influenced us mm -hmm. and who's been a big part of Poetic Justice and helped us, and we're going to um, we're gonna put all that together. And actually, next month, we're going to start a documentary um, that's actually going to be yeah. filmed for us. Yeah. So. I know that I would love to see you guys on tour and <laughs> actually pay to see you guys perform live. That's how amazing they are. <laughs> oh, thank, thank you. you. I know that you guys worked as mentors at the ICA for other youth poets. Mm -hmm. What was that experience like, and what did you take away from it? It wasn't about you know teaching them, because they already know how to write poetry. It was more like guiding them and saying, these are your talents, let's see how we can work together. You know, it was more of a collaboration, more than anything, because we're also growing. We're new, you know, we're teenagers, we don't know everything. So it was more like we're, we're working together with people. So that was great. Yeah. Uh, the people in the workshop were mostly teens. I think mm -hmm. I learned from that process. Yeah. I love their poetry. Um, some of them are my favorite poets to date. Um, Ayano was, he's done work with Brave New Voices, which is like a big mm -hmm. poetry thing that poets, you know, love. And we met him, and that, that led us to meet other people in Brave New Voices and other poets from the area and from all over the country. So I think 
It was just, it was a learning experience. Like we learned about the other people's writing styles and we met people and it was also a time to just um, be with people like us. Just mm-hmm. to, to have someone who had that common interest and passion and just just not explain ourselves because they just understood. They understood how, po- how important poetry was um, in general in their lives and in our lives. So that for me it was just, it was learning. Um, it was learning to just be myself with people who were like me. I know that you guys um, talked about having a tour and a documentary. Um, what else do you have planned for the group this year or next year, if anything? Well, the, the year is coming to an